Welcome to another NoBS OSR's guide for killing Cerberus. If you find these videos helpful and want to see more on the channel, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments what monster you want to see next. Thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of the video. Also just a reminder that all my videos are broken up into chapters in the video player and you can click the arrow to have all the chapters posted on the right side. So let's start by talking about recommendations. In order to kill Cerberus, you need to have level 91 Slayer and also be on a Hellhound or Cerberus Slayer task. You're allowed to use Wild Pies to give yourself a plus 5 Slayer level boost, and they heal 22 hit points each. Taverly Dungeon also has 3 useful shortcuts, and each shortcut will save you a lot of time running. Once again, you can use Summer Pies to give yourself a plus 5 agility boost, as well as they heal 22 hit points each. Moving your POH to Taverly is also very useful, as it offers one of the quickest ways to travel. Cerberus is a pretty punishing boss, so having good armor is a huge bonus. I recommend most players to use a melee setup, and 75 attack for the arc light is extremely useful here. If you have access to really expensive range gear like the Twisted Bow or Max Gear and a Toxic Blowpipe, it can rival the damage output of melee setups. Having high level prayers like Piety or Rigor will help out tremendously. The Spectral Shield is an extremely useful item here for killing Cerberus efficiently. If you cannot afford it, you should do the ghost skipping method, which I'll explain how to do in the mechanics portion of the guide, but it is less kills per hour. There are also three Arceus spells that are very useful here. 76 magic for resurrecting thralls, 80 for death charge, as well as 84 for sinister offering. I'll post all the wiki links to all the spells in the description box below if you want to read up on them. And of course with any high level boss, there's always a chance of dying, so having 500k in the bank, extra taverly teleports, stamina and summer pies, will take out a lot of the stress of looting your gravestone. If you do die, I'll show you how to loot your gravestone in the example portion of the guide. So we're now going over Cerberus mechanics so you know exactly how to fight it once you're in there. First, Cerberus has 600 HP, has pretty strong combat stats, but its defense level is very low for a boss. It's weak to crush attacks and stab attacks, but because its defense level is so low, many weapons perform better using its less dominant style, such as the arc light on stab. It's also immune to poison and venom, and it has an attack speed of 6, meaning its attacks are pretty slow. So I copy this chart from the OSRS wiki, and kudos to whoever made it, but this chart shows the exact sequence of attacks, and I want to break it down with you guys so you know exactly what to expect. As you can see here, there are a total of 4 attacks that Cerberus will use. The first one is the combo attack. It happens every 10th attack, so you'll see it on attack number 1, 11, 21, and so on. This 2 tick speed attack is always in the same order, magic, range, then melee, and can deal a max of 23 damage for each hit. It's a pretty inaccurate attack, but we still want to try our best to prayer switch against it to negate the damage to zero. Here's a clip of Cerberus using this attack, and pay attention to how fast I prayer switch from magic, ranged, melee, and then back to magic. I'm going to replay the clip one more time, but this time, just focus on Cerberus and watch its animation. This attack has a very distinct look because of how immediately it stands on its hind legs after launching its magic attack. But moving on to the second and most common attack, which is the auto attack. It attacks you with a random style of either melee, ranged, or magic at a very slow speed. There's no way to predict which style it will use, so camping protect from magic on throughout the fight is the most effective strategy. If you're standing out of melee range, it'll never use its melee attack, which is useful if you're using a ranged setup, or if you're doing the ghost skip method, which I talk about more later. The third attack is ghosts. It happens every 7 attacks, and only uses it when it's under 400 hit points. You'll see on attack number 21, combo actually overrides ghosts, so we can use this exception to our advantage, and it's basically how the ghost skip method works if you don't have access to the spectral shield. We're going to discuss the ghost skip method now, but if you have access to the spectral spirit shield, you should use the timestamp on screen now to skip forward as this method doesn't apply to you. So let's talk about the ghost skip method. When you first attack Cerberus, you kill it normally like any other monster. The only thing you need to remember is to keep its hit points above 400 and you don't want it to go below that. Using an arc light, I was hitting in the 50s, so you have to start being very careful about attacking Cerberus when it's close to 450 hit points. When you lowered its HP close to 400, you want to stop attacking Cerberus completely, walk a few tiles away, and then optionally switch to a ranged tankier setup like the Din's Bulwark with Justiceer, and just stand and tank the hits. 
As we're tanking, we're basically watching Cerberus for its combo attack. Like I mentioned before, it has a very unique attack animation because of how fast it is, and the moment you see this attack, you start counting the attacks in your head starting at number 11. You still don't have to do anything yet. Tank the 12th attack, tank the 13th attack, and it's around attack 13 where we start armor switching back to our DPS gear. Make sure that we're fully healed, activate Piety, resurrect your Thrall, and the moment Cerberus uses its 14th attack, which should be a standard auto attack now, you now have a time window between attack 14 and 28 to kill Cerberus without any ghosts. If you don't kill it in time by attack 28, ghosts will spawn which is not ideal, and you want to either teleport out, or make sure your prayer points are above 63 to prayer switch the ghosts. Also as you're killing Cerberus, you have to watch out for the lava attack. You'll know it's coming because it will growl grr and yellow text over its head. It happens every 5th attack so it's pretty quick, and it'll only use this attack when it's under 200 hit points. So usually you'll see the lava at the very end of the fight. It'll spew 3 lava pools on the floor, 1 under you and 2 in random spots. So the moment you see the grr yellow text over its head, run away immediately. If you're tick perfect, you'll take 0 damage. If you're late, you'll take 10 damage. And every 2 ticks that you stand in the lava, you'll take 15 damage and it's very punishing. 7 if you're standing on the lava edge. If you're a beginner at killing Cerberus, you might want to consider drinking a super anti-fire potion to reduce the lava damage by 25%. I'll show an example of the attack here, but you can see that I was actually a tick late dodging the lava and I took 10 damage, so that'll happen pretty frequently if you're using a melee setup. If you're using range, you do have a couple seconds to dodge it. So let's go over how the ghost attack works if you're tanking them. During the fight, Cerberus will howl a rue over its head, and ghosts will spawn in the north side of the room in random order and come towards you. The colors are very similar to the Dagonoth Mother, but red is melee, blue is magic, and green is ranged. And you want to have the correct protection prayer on before it launches the attack. If you prayer switch perfectly and don't make any mistakes, it will drain 30 prayer points for each ghost, and 15 if you have the spectral shield equipped. If you switched any of them incorrectly, you'll take 30 damage for each ghost, and 22 if you have an Elijah equipped. But that's basically it for the mechanics. The situation that most people die on is during attack 14 and 15, where you're doing the prayer switch against the ghosts, and the lava attack happens right after. But the best way to handle it is just to be very mindful that while you're preparing to prayer switch the ghost, that you're watching Cerberus very carefully and being ready to click a few tiles away if it spews lava at you. Once you watch the in-game examples and get a few kills under your belt, everything will start to become automatic and you'll very rarely die. So let's move on to setting up your armor. This chart is for building a melee setup. I ranked everything from best to least best, requirements in red, and any important info in cyan. This is the armor chart if you're using a ranged setup. Just like the last chart, I've ranked everything from best to least best, requirements in red, and any important info in cyan. I suggest pausing the video now to set up your armor. And here's how I would set up my inventories. The first one is for using a melee setup with a spectral shield and then prayer switching the ghosts. The second setup is for doing the ghost skip method with a melee setup. And the third is for using a ranged setup with a spectral shield and prayer switching the ghosts. And here's how I would set up my quick prayers for each attack style. You can pause the video now to get both of those things set up. And here are some of the settings I would change before going in to fight Cerberus. But if I'm using Runelight, all the ones with golden stars are my favorite. The most important setting to change is NPC Indicators. Make sure Highlight Tile is checked off, type in Cerberus in the NPCs to Highlight box, as well as check off Show the Respawn Timer. I also like to have my NPC attack options to always right click, and also having Auto Retaliate off. I also like setting my F key keybinds for easier access while I'm fighting. I have my F5 on Prayers, F6 on Inventory, and F7 on Spellbook. So let's go over how to travel to Cerberus. But like I said before in the recommendations, moving your house to Taverly and then running south to the dungeon sign is the fastest option. When we climb down the ladder, that'll bring us right next to the 70 agility shortcut. We have to go to the dungeon sign at the top left of the map. You can take any of the agility routes to travel there, and if you need the dusty key to enter the blue dragon's gate, I'll link the wiki page in the description box below if you need to get it. Once we enter the dungeon near the Hellhound's room, that'll bring us into Cerberus Lair, and there's no need to worry because it's completely safe once you enter. There are three paths you can take with three separate rooms. 
I think Jagex thought there would be a lot more people killing Cerberus, but it doesn't matter which path that you take. You can go to any of the three winches to peek to see if there's any players already fighting Cerberus. If not, you can left click the winch to turn it, and then you can enter the gate to fight the boss. So here are the in-game examples, and you can use the timestamp at the bottom left to skip forward to your desired example. You can see here that I'm just using the western room and peeking the winch. So there's no adventurers inside the cave, so just left click the winch to go in. So I'm running to the north part of the room. You won't be able to attack Cerberus for a couple of seconds, so just stand under it. I mess up the initial kill, so here's the start of another one. But resurrect your thrall, turn on your quick prayers, and unload your spec and walk under. At the start of every kill, prayers which Serbs first attack the combo attack. Using a ranged setup is identical, the only difference is that we're standing out of melee distance. Also, a quick tip for saving prayer during the ghost attack, but you only need 33 prayer points to successfully prayer switch all three ghosts. As long as you have the correct protection prayer on for the last ghost, it still counts and it can save you 10 to 15 prayer points per kill. But there we go, it's Howling Aru, so the three ghosts will come out from the north side. Equip your spectral shield and be ready to prayer switch the most western ghost first. Make sure that the prayer is active before the ghost even does its attack animation. Oh, you can see that we also got attacked by lava, so just run a few tiles away. But we're almost done now, just finish off the kill. I'm casting Death Charge to get that extra 15% spec at the end. Alright, and Cerberus is dead. We have about 5 seconds to prepare, so loot the items, heal fully, cast Sinister Offering when you have 3 ashes, then repeat the kill. Switch to your spec weapon, activate your prayers, and be ready to prayer switch Cerberus' first attack, which is the combo attack. So here's the ghost skip example from the beginning. Activate your prayers, unload your spec, then we'll prayer switch the combo attack. There we go. Now we're going to lower Serb's HP close to 400, but not going under. Okay, that's close enough. Going to stop attacking it completely and walk a few tiles away, and switch to my ranged tank here. You can heal and pot up, turn off piety, and now we're just watching Cerberus closely, waiting for the combo attack animation like I showed previously. You can see that I have my prayer book open, ready to protect from ranged. Yep, there it is. Prayer switch the combo attack. And let's start the count in our head at number 11. That's attack number 12. Attack number 13. Now armor switch back to your DPS gear. Piety back on. Resurrect your thrall. And kill Cerberus as fast as possible. And the only thing we need to look out for now is the lava attack. And this attack only happens when Cerberus is under 200 HP. Since we're trying to do a lot of damage, try your best not to eat food. But if you have to heal... Walk under the boss to delay some of its attacks. Looks like we killed it fast enough before the lava attack. We have 5 seconds now to loot the items, heal fully, and then repeat the kill. Be ready to spec Cerberus, activate your prayers, and be ready to prayer switch Cerberus' first attack, which is always the combo attack. And finally, here just me looting my gravestone, and I'll always be in the middle right next to the key master. You'll get all your armors and weapons back, but your food and potions are left on the floor next to Cerberus. So you can just run back into Cerberus' room, pick up your food, and if you're comfortable enough, you can continue doing your trip, or you can teleport out and just regroup yourself. And that's it for Cerberus. Once again, if you liked my no BS guide, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out tremendously. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment box below, and I'll try my best to give you a response. But anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.